No, it was not recording, so I'm, just, I'm quickly going to repeat what I said in the beginning, okay? I'm sorry about that, because I sent this out to a few people, so I want to make sure I get all of it. Sure. So, uh, again, it's Tuesday. We learned yesterday about Baruch Shomar, where we're supposed to stand for that. Following that, there is the prayer of Ms. Morla Soda, where uh, we thank God for, for all that he does for us, and uh, therefore it's a very important prayer, and we also stand for that. Uh, that prayer is not said on Shabbos because on Shabbos we only bring the required korbono sacrifices. This is a voluntary offering called, called the korban toda. Uh, it is brought together with loaves of bread. So uh, since it's voluntary, we don't we don't uh, say it on Shabbos. And guess what other day you don't say it besides Shabbos? Yom Kippur, Erev Yom Kippur. We, we don't say it. We don't. Uh, Cheater, looking in. We also don't say <laughs> Erev Pesach. Because it's brought with bread, and on Erev Pesach, uh, you're not supposed to have, uh, from, from the uh, sixth hour on, you're not supposed to have bread. So therefore, we don't say then either. Okay. Now, um, I'm not going to get into, uh, you know, the remainder of the davening until we get to Shemun But before I do that, I was thinking maybe I should just give you a general overall uh, rules that apply to davening in general. I thought maybe I should have done that before I started the whole share, but so we'll, we'll do it at this point. First of all, it's important to daven with a minion. I think we covered that, and that Hashem gets upset if he comes to shul and there's no minion, so it's very important to daven with a minion. But it's also important that you daven in a shul with a minion, and you daven at the same time that the minion davens. So some people have a habit, maybe because they're in a slight rush or something, that they'll come to shul and they'll, they'll daven ahead. Okay? Uh, certainly, if you don't have the time to, if you have to leave, it's better to, to daven ahead. But if it's at all possible, you should try to daven along with the minion, especially the Amida, the Shmona Esra. That's very important. When we say the word davening, what does that really mean? What part of the prayer do we mean by tefillah? Do you have any idea? Uh, and the davening, there's so much to it. There's maybe I would 50, say, I would 75, say, 100 pages that we do cover in the morning. I would say the Shmona Esra. The Shmona Esra. That's called davening. So we have two parts of the morning davening which are important and Time sensitive. The first one is when to say Krishma. Shema Yisrael, to say that part, three paragraphs of Krishma, that's time sensitive. There's a specific time by which you must say it. If you've missed it, you've now forfeited your opportunity to do that mitzvah. You could say those paragraphs anytime because they're written in the Torah and you can read from the Torah or read parts of the Torah anytime you want, but there is there is a biblical requirement to say that twice a day, mm -hmm. once in the morning, once in the evening. Uh, and so that is one thing which is time sensitive. The other thing which is time sensitive is the davening, the tefillah itself, the Shemona Esra. That is time sensitive. That is usually about an hour after the expiration of the time that you are allowed to say Krishna. So hypothetically speaking, I would say, guesstimate that today's time to finish Krishna would probably be somewhere between 9.15 and 9.30. Mm -hmm. the, the last opportunity that you have to do the tefillah in its time is approximately 10.30. Uh, there are different opinions, in this, opinions of, of this. There are the two basic rules that will follow, the, the rules of, of time, is the Vilna Gon, also known as the Gra and the Rebbeini Tam. Those are the two main uh, time uh, guidelines that we follow. Uh, just about on every Jewish calendar that's posted in the shul, it'll give you those times. And it's dependent on, obviously, on the time of the year, with sunset and sunrise and so on. There is a for specifically formula for it, and most phones have an application for that. Now, what if 
you can't make it to shul. I'll give you two different uh, rules to follow. One is, what if you can't make it to shul? When should you, 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 you have to be at home. God forbid you're sick or whatever, your car broke down, it's too far to, to walk to shul, you can't make it. When should you dive in at home? So the, the answer is, you should dive in at home at the exact time that they dive in, in the shul that you dive in. So if you're home on a Sunday and you don't have the opportunity to go to shul, whatever, you dive in here at 8.30, that's when you should dive in at home. Uh, the reverse of that is, what if there is no minion? Should you come to shul anyway? Absolutely. So this gentleman over here says absolutely, and he's basing it on his vast knowledge of rules that apply to shuls, and he's correct, that the shul is a very holy place, and it's a place you should come to, to daven, even if there is no minion. Now, what if... What if you, no, cross, forget that. Okay, now, when you come to shul, there are, there are two shuls in the community. One you go to regularly, one not so regularly. Is there any merit to giving business, patronizing the other shul once in a while? What do you think? I would assume it couldn't hurt. Okay. So unlike chicken soup, in this case it could hurt. Uh, you should go to the shul that you always go to. Depending on you. Not, not so much because it depends on you, because there is, there is merit to having a makom kavua, a permanent place where that is your space, and this is where you daven, and it's just... A better thing to do and for that and in the same vein if you have a seat in shul you should always use that same seat that is your space this is where you are where, where Hashem is focusing the morning candle I, I don't know what the story with that is I found it there okay okay um, now uh, and by the way, the same holds true in your house. If you have your specific wall corner that you, that you go to, maybe it's the same corner that your parents sent you when you were timed out. But whatever the case being, if that's, if that's your corner, mm -hmm. it should be your corner to dive in at all times. Now, when you go to shul, should you run to shul or should you walk to shul in a moderate pace? So the answer is, you should run to shul. When you leave shul, you should leave in a moderate pace. Don't run away from shul. Okay? And you should give respect to the shul. In fact, there is merit to, when you leave shul, not to walk out like you walk out of any other room. You'll notice certain people, when they walk out of shul, they walk out backwards. You don't turn your back on the shul. And that same holds true when you see people going up to the Torah and they take out the Torah or something and then they, they will not turn around with their backs towards the ark. They'll, they'll take a few steps backwards. That's also a sign of respect. And you do that even if you meet a very important person, a world leader, that you, you don't turn your back on him. It's mm -hmm. sort of disrespectful. Um, I've seen people do that when they speak to their parents, that they, they, don't, they, won't, they won't turn their back. They'll walk, let's take a few steps back before they, they uh, walk away from a parent. Now, um, okay. Uh, in general, a shul is a very holy place, and the reason why you should have more dominion is because we, we are all sinners. And if you daven with a minion, the, the, the schus of the, of the, of the, of the rabbin, the schus of the many who are there, will supersede your negative 
merit. In other words, if, you're, if, if you've sinned, but you're now in a group of ten people, so Hashem looks very favorably towards that and accepts your prayers as if you were not a sinner. Hmm. So as if you were a righteous person. You, you automatically sort of like, your sins are automatically like canceled out. Hashem will, will uh, accept your prayers and appreciate the fact that you've done it with a minion. Um, even though Hashem is everywhere at all time, even, even, if, even if nobody's in shul, Hashem's divine presence is there. But certainly once you have ten people, it um, increases the energy. Increases the energy. the energy as we understand what energy is. Uh, we like to, we use the word morning tad. Morning. We like to use the word energy morning. when we when we refer to to God. Uh, we don't know what God is. We you know we can call it energy. We can call it you know supernatural something. We really have no idea what it is, and uh, but we use we use words which somehow we can relate to and give us a possible understanding that Hashem's presence is not something you can touch or feel or see or hear or smell, but rather it's something that permeates in the atmosphere in a, in a way like energy does across the airwaves. But whether it's actually anything like that or not, nobody knows. Mm. Okay. What time is it? Oh, you got the six minutes. Okay. Now, um, okay, so if I can think of any more uh, rules that apply to, I, I jotted down some things, but I think I covered most of them. The rules that apply to what? To davening and about coming yeah. on time and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, um, this one was just for you, Ted. Yeah. yeah. A question for you, Mandy. Yeah. Let's say you come in yes. here early, like yeah. we are. Right. You start davening with everybody else. The, what do you, what do you, what's the term for the uh, person who... The shliach tzibur? Yeah. Cantor. The cantor. Yeah. And they're going so fast that there's no way you can possibly keep up without, okay. without skipping. Okay, so skip. You skip. You skip. Okay. You skip. Fast forward. Uh, most important is that you get to yishtabach, which is the pray right before Baruch Hu. Mm -hmm. Try to get, try to do that at the same time. As the as the cantor does, as the shliach tzibur does. Okay, so it's now after after yishtabach, there's a kaddish. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know everybody knows this that you can't say kaddish if there's no minion. Right. But what most people don't know is that let's say there are nine people in the room. You say yishtabach, and then we wait. And, and then the 10th person walks in, Tad comes and, in. And, and then Tad walks in and, and then we say the Kaddish. That's not acceptable. It's not allowed. You can't say that Kaddish. Really? The Kaddish has to be there be, before you begin your Shtabach. So we, if there are nine people and we're inclined to wait, we should wait before your Shtabach right. and then continue your Shtabach. Kaddish, Kaddish by itself, there's no such thing. It's not an individual prayer that's, that's self-contained. It always goes on something else. So in this case, it's on Yishtabach. You know, if we finish reading the Torah, we say another Kaddish. If we say Olenu, there's another Kaddish. If we say... Shemon uh, Esra, there's another Kaddish. Shemon Esra, there's another Kaddish. But you can't, you can't say Kaddish on, on your own just because you have ten people. And... To make this point even stronger is that because Kaddish goes on, 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 go ahead. Uh, we're just going to wait a, a few seconds while uh, Ari takes an important phone call. And uh, I just want to finish with one point. Morning, Elliot. Uh, so, what time is it, Tad, on this clock? Uh, about four minutes up. Oh, okay. Yeah, time. All right. Should I wait? You got you got a few seconds, or it's going to be longer? Uh, my my wife is trying to call me. So. Okay. Yeah, I'm go I'm going to continue. Uh, if there, you actually don't even need ten people to say Kaddish. 
You need ten people for the prayer no, that prompted to... one to say Kaddish. So, for example, if there were ten peace. people in the room for Shemona Ezra, and then somebody walked out, you could say Kaddish anyway. Okay, God, I'll talk to you later. later. Okay, I'm just going to repeat this point for you. Sorry. That if there are ten people in the room, when you said the tefillah, the Shemona Ezra, and then one person walked out, and now you're left with only nine, you could still say Kaddish. Because the Kaddish is not something by itself. The Kaddish is something... Is, goes on, a, on the prayer so that preceded. For those so people. you need the prayer for, you need the minion for the prayer, not the minion for the Kaddish. Because I've seen them do, do both things here. So yes. I've seen them not start Yishtabach right. until we have a minion, or start it and then... Leave. Right. Okay. And then when so that walks so in, now, you know yeah. the, now you know the real way. Okay? So yeah. uh, that's, that's the way it is. Okay. Um, Let me just finish off with yeah, one. Keep going. I'm listening. Okay. Um, now, since you brought up, you asked me what the cant is called, the Shlech Tzibur, I just want to read you one part from the, from the uh, Shulchan Aruch, which, which says, who should be the one davening by the Yom? Now, in America, we basically have given it either over to a hired cantor mm-hmm. who's going to do it, or if somebody has your side, or God forbid is in the morning, we send him to that. But look how strong the halacha is, and we'll talk about this next time, because it, I'm not going to leave it at that. But look how strong the halacha is as to who should go to Davin. It says that the person that goes to Davin should be a person who is free of all sins. Okay which, again, leaves us only with that. Uh, he in, should in not even it. have a, a reputation that he ever sinned. Wow. Okay? Even when he was a child. That means the person we send should be somebody who we know that ever since he's a child has never sinned. And he has to be a a modest person and honor. I'm not exactly sure how to say honor. Uh, humble. He has to be extremely humble. You know? The, that's one of the requirements, wow. which reminds me of this guy who, who they, didn't, they didn't send him to Davin, and he was very upset. He goes, for the last 20 years, I'm the most humblest person here, and you have the nerve to send somebody else to Davin besides me. So we're not talking about that type of a humble person. He also has to be somebody that everybody in the shul likes. And everybody finds him to be a pleasant person. He has to have a good voice, a sweet voice. He has to know how to read from the Torah. You better get up there fast. And he has to be fluent in everything. So basically, the the criteria to sending somebody up to Davin is... uh, Flawless. Yeah, it's, it's, unflawed. it's unbelievable. Um, he also has to have somebody, and this is where it's... There's nobody here is fit to dominate except for you. Uh, well, not really, because else. it has to have somebody who has a full beard. But however, some people say that it doesn't really mean a full beard. It means he has to be old enough to have a full beard. Okay, we'll okay. finish this tomorrow. Okay, not tomorrow. I may not be here tomorrow the next day. Thursday, I'm not going to be here. I, I've got to